Welcome. This is uh, the cross device development with Cordova and Amazon Fire OS. Um, we are from Amazon and specifically Amazon Lab 126. We're the guys that make the hardware at Amazon, so the Kindle e-readers and the Kindle Fire devices, as well as the Kindle Fire TV streaming media and the Kindle phone, uh, the Fire phone. So. Um, to get started, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Russell Biatti. I am the HTML5 technical evangelist. Uh, I work in the group that makes the AWV, um, the, I'm sorry, the, the WebView engine that is um, integrated into Kindle Fire devices. And I work with uh, external uh, developers and internal developers to both talk about what the technology can do and then also take feedback from developers um, about uh, what can we do to improve the engine. Um, my partner today is uh, Archana Nayak. I'll let you introduce yourself. I'm, um, I've been involved with this uh, Kudova efforts for almost two years. I'm a software developer in web app platform at Lab 126. Um, I was involved from the very beginning where we introduced the Fire OS platform for Kudova. And um, the differences between Android and Fire OS, we'll go over the slides, yeah. And I'm also a committer, maintainer, and owner for Fire OS platforms. So, so yes, yeah, so I'm here to talk about the technology, but you actually have somebody who is the Apache committer, the person who can touch the code uh, is here as well. To, so you can get some hands on from the, somebody who actually really knows what they're talking about. All right, so you're gonna go, um, yeah. to, all right, cool. So what we're gonna talk about today, um, we're gonna go through the slides straight and then we're gonna do a workshop at the end and get you guys set up on our devices. We brought a bunch of uh, Fire devices, but what the first thing I wanna do is talk about the Amazon Fire OS platform to give you kind of an overview. I, I, a lot of people aren't very familiar with what uh, we're doing at uh, Amazon in terms of hardware. And then we're gonna talk about specifically uh, Cordova on Fire OS and how to do development there. Then we'll do some hands-on. We're gonna do some um, development. I'm gonna sh uh, show some code, talk about some best ways to use um, Cordova on our platform, talk about some custom Amazon APIs, and then we'll do a workshop. Basically, we'll, we'll get you guys uh, some devices and we'll get you all set up so you can do development. Uh, and at the end, uh, any questions you might have. So, talking about Amazon Fire OS. Uh, so, the um, the first thing is, uh, how many people here own a Kindle e-reader? Two or three people? How many people own a Kindle Fire device? Anyone? All right, so we got one person. So, all right. So you may not realize, but three years ago, we launched this device here. This is the original Kindle Fire. And this is in 2011 we launched this. Yeah. And it was an extraordinary success. It was the, the most successful Amazon product launch ever. Um, they sold millions of these devices. And it's only been three years, but we followed on. The, 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 the success of the original Kindle Fire proved that there was a market for um, tablets from Amazon. So they, we immediately followed that up. Within a year, uh, we launched three more tablets which was a follow-on to this, looks just like it, the second generation Kindle Fire. Then we have this one, I, I actually charged all of them so you can kind of see them. Oh, there's Gary Busey, look at that. Um, so this is the, exactly, this is the Kindle Fire HD, um, which is just an, a, sort of a, a nicer, higher resolution uh, version of the, of the original Kindle Fire. And then this is the HD 8.9, so this is the uh, larger screen one as well. So uh, what you're seeing here is um, this is the uh, special offers that, that um, every time you turn on the device you get uh, some different offers about products and services that, that you can have. So that was in the first year. So that was in 2012 we launched those devices. Then last year we launched three more devices. I'm going to show them all to you. I'm all here. This is the Kindle Fire HDX. So this is uh, a High resolution, high power, it's got a Qualcomm chip in it, um, very fast processor uh, tablet. We have a, the same version, but in a lighter than air, that's the advertising version. Um, oops, that one's not turned on yet. Let's turn that on while we're waiting. Oh, there we go. So this is the uh, Kindle Fire HDX uh, 8.9 inch. And then also the, let's see, one more thing over here. This is the uh, Kindle Fire HD, the second generation of it. So nice one. So this is, three more came out in 2013. Not to rest on our laurels, this year 
we launched the Fire TV, which is a streaming media player. And I don't have that out, but I have it here if you want to see it, um, which is powered also by uh, the same uh, chipset, same operating system that powers the tablets. And then we just launched um, the Fire Phone, which is uh, very interesting. It's got a, a very cool uh, head tracking um, hardware and software, and we're going to play with that uh, today. Uh, we launched that a couple months ago. And then just a couple weeks ago, we announced and launched the newest version of the HDX. This is the HDX 8.9 inch, um, which is just a little bump up in, in functionality. Then the HD6. Which is very cool. It's, it's uh, ninety nine dollars is the the base model, and it's uh, it's very cool. It's a very it runs on the same operating system. It's uh, really nice. We're gonna sell a bazillion of them. This I, this is my actually my personal version. I really like it because we have different colors on it. So finally, I have a stack of black ta tablets at home, and uh, I'm finally able to to tell which one I, is mine. And then uh, also the uh, Kindle Fire HD is here. So. In three years, we've had launched 10 tablets, a phone, and a TV in three years. So this is a lot of devices. And we've sold tens of millions of these devices. So it's a real platform. It covers a variety of devices and screen sizes. It's mobile, it's tablets, and it's in people's homes. And people are, are using them a lot. All right. So. Fire OS actually didn't get called Fire OS until just last year. And we're sort of in a transition period right this moment because uh, last year we launched Fire OS 3. It was based on Android Jelly Bean. Um, the original devices, uh, the oldest ones in 2012, are based on um, Ice Cream Sandwich. Those are staying on Ice Cream Sandwich. Last year's devices started on Jelly Bean. And we're now going to do an upgrade to oh, Fire OS 4 right now. It's actually happening over the year. We're doing a trial run within, I think, this week. And then uh, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to roll it out to everyone. And then all the new devices uh, that just got announced and launched within the past few weeks are running Fire OS 4. So basically, everything from 2013 forward is going to be running Fire OS 4, which is based on Android KitKat. And um, the other devices, the, uh, the earlier devices are on Ice Cream Sandwich, and the first one is on Gingerbread. So that's, that's, that's the oldest one we have. So um, why do we call it Fire OS? Why don't we just call it Android, right? And it's because we have a customized version of the operating system. Um, let's see. Yeah. Well, I'll talk about the operating system and then talk about, a little bit about some other stuff in this slide. There is a lot of integration with the hardware. So we've optimized the OS to the hardware. We've added features to the OS. We've done a lot more than just take Android and throw it on the device. It's still Android. It's still comp Android compatible. But there's a lot of extra stuff there that, that is involved. Additionally, we're all here because we are HTML5 developers, Cordova developers, right? Integrated into uh, Fire OS is a high-powered uh, web engine. If you look at the top line of this uh, tablet right there, you'll see that there is a bunch of different uh, stores um, and other functionality that are all based on HTML5. Amazon decided, this before I got there, that they wanted to take advantage of and leverage the development that they've done in, for years in the web. And they wanted to use that experience to uh, create high-end applications for their customers. So when you are using a tablet and you're using the App Store, we have our own App Store, just like uh, Google has their Google Play, we have our Amazon App Store. Uh, that is running on HTML5. The Kindle Store, for the bookstore, HTML5. The bookstore, the, I'm sorry, the Audible bookstore is HTML5. The MP3 store is HTML5. We've also done things, uh, and also, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the actual goods store, the Amazon store, is HTML5. I'll get to that in just a second. So I wanted to tell you just how important HTML5 is. Also, we have integrated features as well. Um, Kindle Free Time, which is a way of, of monitoring how much time. You can set up uh, profiles for your kids, and then you can determine how long uh, you want them to use the tablet. That's done in an HTML5. And then also Mayday, which is, have you guys seen the advertisements for Mayday? I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, well, what you can do is there's a little Mayday button at the top of the screen. If I go down here, there's a little Mayday button on every one of these. And what you can do is um, 
a person, a live person will show up on your screen, on your, on your tablet, and they will be able to draw on your tablet, help you out. You can talk to them. They can't see you, but they can see your screen. And you can ask them questions and um, do uh, some really cool stuff. And it's all done on the web engine using WebRTC underneath the hood. So it's a very, very cool functionality. So all this stuff is running on HTML5. So if we're going to base on all of that on HTML5, and this is a couple of years ago, remember, then we needed to have a web engine that could handle it, that could do a really good job of it. So what we came up with was Amazon WebView. And this is what really separates, when it comes to Cordova, really separates uh, Fire OS from stock Android. What we did was we took um, Chromium, so V25 uh, in the 2012 versions. Um, and again, like I said, we're in this transition period. So uh, up until right now, V25 has been the version 25 of Chromium has been the, the norm, but now we're going to version 34. So everything from uh, every tablet in 2013, 2014 um, is going to be uh, V34 of, of Chromium. So we took that version of Chromium, we integrated it into the operating system. That gives you things that better power, better um, development um, in terms of uh, remote debugging and functionality. It gives you things like we enabled um, WebGL. So we didn't just take Chromium version 25, which didn't have WebGL, we, we enabled it to make sure we could have it on the tablet. So for the past uh, year or so, everything from 2013, 2014 is going to, it has uh, WebGL already running on it. So some of the newer OSs you guys may have heard uh, just got WebGL just, just passed recently, iOS 8, for example. Uh, KitKat still doesn't have a WebView that has WebGL, though it'll come in Android L, um, and we do. So we've also optimized it for the hardware. So there's a 2D canvas that is a GPU accelerated. Um, there is um, cache warming and basically made sure that the engine runs as best as possible on the hardware. So the reason is, is because we have all those customers and they're all using this, these tablets to interact with our, um, our content and services, right? So they're all prime customers, a lot of, well, not all, a lot of them, and they are seeing video, they're getting books, they're getting eBooks, they're doing their Christmas shopping, they're doing real world uh, things on the tablets and they're spending real money and we need to make sure that the stores were able to, to do that very well. So we needed an HTML engine that rocked. Once we decided to do that, then we we're able to, to open it up and give it to, to other developers. And that's what we've done with Cordova. And then we also have a, um, a, 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 a way of packaging your HTML5 apps without even touching any code at all. So that's, if you go to developer.amazon.com, I'll talk about that. Uh, you can just go that way as well. But so to recap, V25 is on the 2012 versions. V34 is coming now, and it'll be on all 2013, 2014 devices. We have not just taken you know, Chromium and thrown it on the device. We've also made sure we've enabled uh, advanced things, uh, WebGL, form validation, WebRTC, some other ones. Um, it's got remote debugging via Chromium DevTools. Uh, at the end, when we do the workshop, I'm going to show you how to, to do that. Um, and then also, we've done things like on the phone, on the Fire Phone, we've integrated the head tracking APIs into the engine itself so that uh, you can, from JavaScript, get, uh, keep track of your head positioning as you're using your uh, app and then uh, be able to see how far away your head is, whether it's tilted, I, and I'll, can do, I'll do a demo for that. So we've done a lot more than just take an engine and uh, just take Chromium and put it on there. We've integrated it deeply into the OS. All right, so that kind of shows you what it is and why you would bother with, uh, with uh, targeting with Amazon, uh, I'm sorry, targeting Amazon Fire OS with Cordova. So what I wanted to do now is just kind of go over um, what Cordova is uh, in terms of working with uh, Amazon and then just you know, cover the basics, just, you know, just do a recap of, of Cordova. The first thing is uh, we have um, Apache uh, Software Foundation Committership. So we, last year, we, when we launched FireOS 3, we also started working with the Apache uh, Foundation to create a platform target. So just like um, Firefox OS and Windows um, Phone and iOS and Android and all the other tar targets that are in a part of Cordova, there's now an Amazon FireOS target. Um, that gives us a lot of uh, ability to make sure that we can do um, a really good job in terms of uh, updating, you know, uh, fixing bugs, getting input from developers, and then also having an input in the, in the Cordova, uh, the direction of Cordova in, in general. So it's really good. 
at Amazon, we actually use Cordova internally for a, a bunch of different projects. And in the App Store itself, right now, the Amazon App Store, there are thousands of Cordova apps. So people are using Cordova right now to put apps out there on the Amazon App Store. So this is what you need to do to get Cordova up and running uh, on Amazon. So uh, the basics of Cordova haven't changed. You put Node, uh, you get Cordova up. Because we're an Android-based uh, uh, OS, you'll need the, the Android SDK from Google. So just like you were, if you were building for Android, stock Android, you would get that. And then you also need the Amazon WebView uh, libraries. And there's a, um, a URL. I put the URLs at the end of the, the, the slides as well, so you can get them. Uh, the reason you need this is because um, the original of uh, the FireOS 3 included both stock Android and Amazon WebView. Um, FireOS 4 doesn't. It just includes Amazon WebView, so uh, you won't need them as much. But this is what you need to make sure that you cover all of the devices going all the way back to 2012. So basically what you do is you download the zip file, you unzip it, you get the jar, you throw the jar into uh, the Cordova base library, which is a hidden library on, on Unix type systems like a Mac and, and, um, and in Windows, I always forget exactly where it is, but it's the Cordova and you put it in common libs. And um, once it's there, then making an app is your standard uh, Cordova app. Does everyone recognize this using Cordova? Anyone who doesn't recognize this? This is your basic four steps for making a Cordova app. We'll create hello world, go into the platform, uh, in, into the directory you made, add your Amazon Fire OS uh, as a target, as your platform target, and then run it and you're, you're good to go. You'll, you've made an app. So some of the cool things you can do though, because we're basing it on Amazon WebView, if you do Cordova run and then dash dash debug, then your, you can use remote debugging and actually debug the application right on the hardware itself. So you'll get the, the, the um, Chromium dev tools on your desktop, and you'll be able to access and do everything you would normally do uh, remotely. And again, these are, uh, this is on devices all the way back to the, the older ones. Let's see, where's the oldest one I have here? This guy who was released uh, two years ago, three years ago. So there's, it's some very cool stuff that you can do on older hardware as well. Uh, the way you do that, by the way, is um, if you are uh, doing it on, on uh, 3.0, you need to uh, connect with the old way of doing it, which is using the um, uh, um, Android debug bridge. So you connect to it this way, uh, and then you, use the, then you get to localhost. But the newer devices uh, that just came out and the ones that once the OTA hits, uh, you can just go to Chrome inspect and it'll just show up there. Yeah, makes sense. So... Um, when you're doing Cordova and on uh, Fire OS, we've supported all of the standard plugins as well. So uh, Archana is actually the one that did all this. Uh, the, you know, we uh, had to make sure that all of these core plugins work on Fire OS, just like they work on the other uh, Cordova targets. So if you've already written apps that can do any of these things and you've used the plugins, those will, those will come right over to Fire OS as well. So that is, in general, uh, yeah. There, there are more plugins than that that are official plugins? Uh, yes, there's, uh, there's three, and I'll talk about those in just a, a bit, but um, for the, that are Amazon specific, but these are the, the core ones that are uh, supported across all the different platforms. What I meant was, let's say that there's a, a other plugin that's uh, not specific to this list. Is it just that it's not tested on there, or what? Oh, it's just that it's not tested. Yeah, these are actually written and tested. Uh, if, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> there's we're videoing, so they'll need to. Yeah, so I was just saying that depending on who wrote that plugin and what the purpose of that plugin, right? So most people um, have platform in mind when they are writing because they want to bring that native functionality to their web apps, right? Um, so these are the core plugins that we actually added Amazon Fire OS platform support. But other plugins, if you think as a developer that, yeah, I can use this on Fire OS as well, then you will have to add our platform there or let us know and we can help you out there, you know. Sorry, can you repeat the question? 
very uh, depending on what the functionality is i would say so um, it will diverge a lot if it is a platform specific service to give you an example gcm is very much tied to um, google right or android um, amazon as of now does not support gcm out that's of the box that's cloud messaging Oh yeah, Google Cloud push notifications basically, right? We have very parallel system to um, do exactly same or whatever similar functionality. Uh, for that, you will have to write a complete code, a separate code base. But things like battery, um, you know, uh, contacts, yeah, hardware, which is like because we are based off Android platform. So if you're touching those one of those core services, then it's very straightforward. Are you familiar with plugin structure at all? Okay, okay, so then all you're doing is probably modifying your plugin.xml to point to Android source, but be on Fire OS platform and you're ready to go. So. Okay, yeah, go ahead. The map plugin, would that be different? So yes, it would be because uh, you can use Google Maps because it's, it's open. You'd have to have a deal with Google, I think, to, be, to use it commercially. Um, but uh, if you wanted to use an alternative map, uh, we have a map API as well now um, that was just launched with the, the, the Fire Phone. So you could use that uh, differently. But if you were using something like a native map functionality, yeah, you'd have to, it, basically it's services, it, you'll have to port and then hardware functionality uh, you can, you know, it, it should be very easy to to pull over. That answer your question. Okay. All right. Cool. So, uh, all right. So we're barreling along here. Um, so what I wanted to do now is is just give you guys some uh, specifics in terms of the things you can do with the uh, the Amazon Fire OS platform, and then um, we'll go into some workshops and, and things like that. So Cordova can be used for two things, right? Um, you can do cross-platform development, which is probably the, the, easily the, the number one reason you would do Cordova, right? So you can have your app on uh, Windows Phone, Firefox OS, uh, you know, iOS, Android, and then also bring it over to, um, to Amazon. The problem with that, though, is if you're doing that, you're targeting the lowest common denominator of functionality. We have a really high-end web engine built into the platform, and it goes into all devices since uh, 2012 up because we've got everything even the ICS devices have the Amazon WebView chromium based engine so there's a lot you can do using HTML5 functionality that's advanced HTML5 functionality so if you want to target just Amazon Fire OS uh, uh, for your app, which is what I'm going to be talking about here, then you can do some really cool things and you, don't, you can save yourself a lot of time and effort as a developer. You can really do some uh, advanced functionality and it's a, just a, a nicer sort of accelerated way of doing hybrid web apps. You don't have to worry about um, what happens when my app closes, what happens when it goes in the background. Cordova's already handled all those, um, that uh, lifecycle stuff for you, right? Um, they've got all these plugins for you. So you don't have to do all that. Um, you get all the benefits of developing for a custom uh, a specific platform but without ha but be being able to use the skills you have in html5 so i'm going to go over some of the some of the things that you may not realize that you could do uh if you just target a high-end uh, platform uh like uh fire os and uh, with the amazon webview um just to summarize uh, media queries advanced media queries flexbox layout you can finally use that it's it, you know it's been out there for a while people haven't really used it much you can use uh, css transforms to accelerate um, the uh, add different layers and have the gpu do a lot of the drawing on the screen um, you can uh, limit some of the, uh, this, the interactions to make your app more native um, you can use webgl something that is, is pretty new but it's been around uh, on our platform for the past year now, uh, and things like form validation, which saves you a lot of JavaScript code and things like that. Let's take a look at some of these uh, examples. So, um, media queries have been around for, for a long time. It's been around since HTML4, but now we can do things like, if you look at this last line here, uh, device pixel ratio. So now you can tell, okay, I've got a device pixel ratio. Um, the high-end device we have is a three, um, and the low end device we have is a one. So it's a very a huge variation in terms of how many pixels per, um, per inch, I guess, per, per, per area uh, in these screens. And so you want to be able to customize your CSS to be able to go across those platforms. If you're developing an app that's going to run on this thing, and this, 
These are very different uh, devices, and, and uh, you want to be able to do that dynamically. And this is the way you can do it. Um, and the thing is, you don't have to be afraid to use this because it's there, it's embedded in the platform. That's one example. That. Sure. Um, you know, I don't know the answer to the question. We can, uh, I'll take a look at it. So the question was, is the actual viewport being presented as a pseudo viewport like some of the other ones? And I, I'm pretty sure it comes over accurately. So if the, if, if the, if the, the, the DPI is, say, 3, it, it'll come 3 all the way to the CSS. Um, the question in my mind is whether Cordova is, because you can modify that when you put the embedded web view in your Android. Um, uh, um, when you embed hybrid, uh, when you have a hybrid app and you embed the web view, you can actually modify what the 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 the, the actual viewport is. And so, oh, is that right? Okay, so. And it won't it won't say it in CSS. Now I'm pretty sure this is accurate, but we can check it. Actually, it'd be something that we definitely want to do. And and if we find out it's not right, then we can we can fix it. So. Um, but that's a good question. I, I, I don't know the answer, but I know what you're talking about. It could be a little twitchy. All right, Flexbox layout. So you can see we've kind of combined these with some media queries here. And Flexbox basically allows you to do things. The holy grail is that you can vertically align things. This is the, the nicest thing about Flexbox, probably. Um, but also that you can um, dynamically put your elements on the page, and they can flow as a row. They can flow as a column. Um, and you can basically move things around and make it a lot more seamless without having to do specific dimensions, uh, absolute positioning, and tricks like um, you know margins, auto margins, and things like that. Now you can use uh, Flexbox. If you're targeting our older devices, the 2012 devices, you'll have to use the WebKit uh, prefix for it. But other than that, they work uh, all the way uh, across our, our devices. So this is something that will save you time and effort when you're doing the layout. It's something really nice. A lot of developers have avoided it because of its lousy support on various uh, platforms. Again, if you're targeting just Amazon platform, you can, you can go for it. This is a CSS acceleration. This is a, you know, the, the top lines here is sort of a trick to, to whatever um, element that you've put the, the um, uh, a, a transform on, it immediately will put that element on its own layer, and so it'll help when it comes to repainting that object. But these four um, areas, position, scale, rotation, and opacity, these properties, rather, if you do um, the 3D or regular transforms, they will be GPU accelerated. So they should be fast and fluid on the device um, it, without having any problems. Now, if you do things like font size and things like that, then, then it's going to do a lot of calculations, and it won't be smooth. You'll get the jankiness, right? But if you concentrate on these uh, things, you can put those in your app, and whatever you're manipulating is going to be really nicely done. And with the debug tools, you should be able to see the different layers, be able to track what's going on, the frame rates, things like that, and see the benefit of these right away. So this is a pretty basic um, uh, thing. And again, it's something that you can, you with stock Android WebView from ICS or Jellybean, you wouldn't be able to use these things um, in uh, AWV, you can. Uh, I say AWV, that's Amazon WebView, we, that's what we call it. So because it's a WebKit browser, um, we can do things like make sure we make it sure it looks a lot more like a native app. Uh, for example, the, the tap highlight, you want to get rid of that. You want to make sure that the, um, uh, the, the WebKit rendering of fonts is sort of a, sometimes it, it, it affects it, depends on the font. Um, but you can also do things like make sure that when you highlight something, you don't get any pop-ups, like for copy-paste and things. So you, your text will be text like you expect it to be on the page without being interactive like a web page. This stuff is really just, you know, the, and there's, I think there's some more things out there, but this just gives you an example that you can use the WebKit prefixed um, custom functionality to make your app be more like an app. This is a fun one. This is, I've been playing this for the, with this for the past year. WebGL is just a really fantastic new technology. We, uh, we announced, uh, we launched support for it last year, and we've been playing with lots of different ways of using WebGL. The demo I'm gonna show you in a bit 
um, actually uses WebGL, and it's, it's a really neat technology, and it can apply to a lot of different areas. It can be games, it can be just sort of eye candy. It can also be some really cool things if you have um, neat object models, you can kind of um, figure out what you can do with that in terms of, of adding an extra layer of interactivity. WebGL, I'm sorry, in case you don't know, is, is, is the 3D graphics. It basically takes your canvas, and instead of having to do X, Y, you know, dots with the 2D canvas, now you can do 3D space. And with a library like 3JS, uh, which is a really well done library, now it becomes very easy for web developers just to add uh, models or add objects and then animate them and do different things like that. It's, it's very nice. And the thing is, it runs incredibly well on our devices because of the GPU uh, that's in here and the, uh, in the integration with the hardware. And this is the last sort of tip here. And um, it's really there just because it sort of shows you how much time saving you can have. And this is something that's not on WebKit, even on, on, um, on KitKat. Uh, I'm sorry, WebView on KitKat, the stock Android. Um, it's something that is in, in our devices, and it's just a nice sort of time saver. What you can do is you can have a, um, a required and then a pattern uh, in the tag itself. Uh, have CSS hooked up to that, and now you don't have to write JavaScript to make sure that the URL field actually has a URL or the email field actually has an e email field, uh, email in there. Um, it's just a really nice way of uh, putting the, the, the making forms, uh, the, your expectations of what's supposed to be in there, uh, be able to give the developer, give the user feedback on what's going on and to get the, the right information back without having to do, like I said, a bunch of custom JavaScript to get it done. So it is 1054. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over a little bit, a few of the, the custom Amazon APIs. And then I'll show you a, a quick demo of some of the, all these tips kind of put together into an app. And then we're going to do a workshop. And I've got all of these devices here. We can hand them out. I think we've got enough. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we got a dozen devices and we got um, three phones. So um, we, you guys can hook them up if, you, if your PCs, if you have them. And what, what we really want to do is walk you through getting the um, uh, the Amazon uh, API installed. I'm sorry, the uh, the AWV SDK installed and up and running, and being able to make sure that you can compile and run to, to Amazon without any problems. So yeah. Amazon API is in Java, right? It's in Java. Yep. Oh, uh, we have to download the, um, the Android SDK for that. No, 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 the iOS applications. Uh, the iOS applications? Uh, no, so th these are only running on uh, Android? Android? Yeah, so you need the Android SDK in order to develop for them. No, no, so when you're doing development for this, this device, you'll need the Android SDK in order to compile it so that it runs here. So we'll, we'll go over that during the, the workshop. So, all right. In addition to the, you know, the, just the, an HTML5 engine that really is great. Now, the thing is, all the tips I, I to, showed you before, those you can use on any platform that has a really good uh, web engine. So uh, iOS just got a good one. I know Firefox OS has a really good one. So you can use a lot of those tips across uh, platform. So that's, those are not uh, specifically proprietary. They're just advanced, right? So you can do it first on Amazon uh, on the Fire OS, and then as the other uh, platforms catch up, or if they're already there, you can then use that same sort, um, that, that same sort of advanced HTML5 to to target those as well. So you don't have to kind of do the minimum, uh, you know, sort of common HTML. Now you can start to target higher end devices. We also have. Uh, four different APIs that are custom to Amazon, um, these devices, uh, that integrate with Cordova and in the, uh, the WebView itself. The first one is Andrew, uh, Amazon Device Messaging. Um, I'm going to go over it in just a second, but uh, the idea is that that's your push, uh, push notifications, and we've integrated it with the push notifications API, so the, the, the plugin, push notifications plugin that's already out there that also supports GCM and um, the iCloud, what's that one called? A AP. APNS, that's right. And then also the Windows one as well, which is W something, uh, yeah. Sorry, but it, they're all into the same plugin. So we've got support in, in, integrated into that. The head tracking API is actually built into the WebView inside of the phone, so you don't even need a plugin for that. I'll show you how that works. 
Uh, and then we also have two APIs as well for the, the phone, the home API and the motion gestures plugin. And what these allow you to do is uh, you can download the Fire Phone SDK, use these custom plugins, and add features to the, the home screen and to add um, uh, interesting uh, functionality in terms of using uh, gestures, which is really neat. So very quickly, I'll just go over some of this. So if you go to um, the push plugin on GitHub, or you can just add it here. Um, this, is, again, is the, the generic push plugin uh, uh, project that has all the different um, push notification uh, functionality in it. We've added um, Amazon device messaging. And it's a little complicated. You have to, you'll definitely have to go through the, the, um, the documentation on the site. Uh, but in general, the idea is there's, there's three parts. There is your server, which is going to keep track of uh, registrations and keep track of, of which of the devices you want to send messages to. And then there's the um, uh, Amazon device messaging server in the middle, which is going to actually push out notifications to the devices. And the way that works is the devices need to register to the, um, the ADM server says, hey, I want to listen for a specific app to send me messages. So it's a little bit roundabout because your server has to register with the, the ADM server, the client has to register with the ADM server, and then finally the uh, server can then start pushing messages out to the, the, um, the client. So this is all in the documentation, it's all there, um, but it's uh, integrated in and it becomes really easy to just uh, add a, um, a message. And we're gonna, did you get that working? Almost. <laughs> well, we're having network problems, so we wanted to demo it. So we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll wave my hands and we'll kind of, so, um, so that's that. The second thing is the head tracking API. Um, and I'll give a, a, this is just a very, very, very quick demo. When you guys are playing with the phones, if you, we can pass them around so you can see it. But the idea is that embedded into the phones is the ability to keep track of your head. There's actually four cameras here. And if you notice that black dot is there, now I'm gonna face away from you so you can see it. What's happening is, see how it sees my head? Okay, now if I move, if I tilt my head, I don't know if you guys see this, I'm gonna turn it, you see how it turns blue? That's how it knows I'm tilting my head. If I go closer, the dot gets smaller. Can you, everyone see that? And then if I go farther away, the dot gets bigger. So it's not just uh, orientation with my hand. It actually knows where my head is and how far away my head is from, from the device. What this allows you to do is um, fun and interesting um, things. Let's go back to the lock screen here. This is not HTML, but uh, what that allows you to do is with your head, you're able to get a perspective on the device. And again, I'll pass this, or the, we've got three of them, they're all uh, live, you can check it out. You wanna use this, this is a cool functionality, right? It's built in, it, there's some really cool things you can do with it. This is how you do it, it's very simple. We have an Amazon head tracking event, you register it in JavaScript, and then you get um, a, a bunch of information back from the event, oops. Uh, the head inclination angle, so when I turn my head like this and it turned blue, it's because I'm always getting an idea of, of how my head is tilting which is really, it's fun. Uh, you'll see in the demo I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, it's an actual another way of interfacing with the, uh, an app. Is your face detected? If you go outside of the scene, then you want your app to stop like doing anything. You can tell when the face is there or not. Um, and then things like um, a high resolution uh, timestamp and as well as the X, Y, and Z. The thing about the X and the Y is that it's registered, it, it's correlated to how far away your head is. So those numbers are actually, um, will change, the deltas will change uh, at, a, at a higher rate and lower rate depending on how far away your head is from the, from the screen. Very interesting. You said there are four cameras on that device? There are. There's one, two, three, four cameras, and they're, they're sort of keeping track of your head all the time when you're using it. Okay. So it's a very interesting, interesting technology, and it's something that is uh, that Amazon has put a lot of time and effort into, and it's definitely not going away. It's, it's an interesting thing that we're, we're still exploring how to use, so it's, it's very cool. Um, again, and this doesn't need a, a plugin, which is really neat. This is the Home Manager API. Uh, here's a little picture of it. Basically, what it allows you to do is, you uh, when you download the Fire Phone SDK in it, there's two um, plugins that you, uh, Cordova plugins. Add the Cordova plugin, and then there is a variety of, uh, of functionality. But the general idea is that you can um, on the home screen. Again, I'll, I'll hold it up, and you guys can play with it. Um, each of the apps has a functionality inside of it that gives you a, a large icon here and then 
underneath and give you information about the app, something that it's doing. So from, from JavaScript and using the plugin, you can actually modify these. You can put uh, images in there. You can have a grid. You can have updates. You can have your email messages. You can have notifications. Um, you can also uh, do things like put a badge on there to say how many unread. So this is all functionality that's added because of the plugin uh, to the Fire Phone. So it's, it's a kind of a neat little uh, plugin that, that works pretty well. And finally, the motion gestures. And motion gestures are uh, sometimes it's hard to explain, but let me, I'll give you one example. So here is this, and if I do, I have to look at it because it's head tracking. If I go flick like this, okay, so, yeah, why is it not working? Am I in the right spot? There we go, okay. I was in the wrong. Uh, okay, so when you flick it like this, okay, there we go. A side menu comes in. And when you flick it back, it goes out, flick it this way, like that. If you're in the uh, web browser, you can, uh, when you are reading the, uh, no, there's no network, but the idea is that you can tilt it this way and this way and, and your screen will scroll. So you can get access to that as well from within Cordova using uh, JavaScript APIs, again, through, these, uh, through the Fire Phone SDK. So, uh, and this is, uh, you know, this is just some, a, a code blob that shows you how it works, basically. Um, so the, uh, the phone actually uses the accelerometer and it also uses the four cameras to keep track. So the accelerometer is part of it, but not all of it. The, the, the head tracking is a lot of it. So when it's doing the flicking, it's, 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 it's registering the, the accelerometer, but also looking to see if your face is uh, far away and uh, adjusting based on that. Okay. So it's interesting. It's, it's very cool techno technology. When you guys see it and play with it, you'll get a better idea. All right, so I'm going to give a demo, and um, so this is where the little hand waving will come in. Um, what we wanted to do was uh, do a uh, an example of all these the technologies I just talked about, Flexbox, and um, uh, you know orientation changing, and the um, uh, the limiting of the the user interaction, things like that, all in sort of one little little app. So um, this is basically what it is. What would happen if it was working is that the push notification would come in and you get a push notification. Everyone's seen a push notification? So, all right, so you know how that works. And then it would start up the app. Oops, do I have the right phone? I don't. Can I have your phone? <laughs> so I'll just start up the, the app manually. So what what I wanted to do was show how you can have a daily deals um, app. So here's a new uh, Francis uh, X1 Red Eper Espresso machine. And in it is a nice model. Now, so one of the, the challenges for WebGL is, you know, how we're going to make models. You know how many millions of, of products there are on the Amazon catalog? It would be a lot, right? So you have to kind of be practical about it. You could probably come up with 360 five models a year though, right? For different products, especially electronics and things. So here is uh, the, um, the coffee machine, but it's actually a WebGL model. So I can check it out. You can see that it is um, navigating around. I can check out the power switch. I can check out the, um, these things. But the other thing is I've also got it hooked up to head tracking. So that if I lean my head, it's going to then rotate the device. So I can take a look at it. I can see, okay, you know, this is a temperature gauge. Now I want to see the back of it. I just lean my head and you can see how it's detecting it. There we go. And it moves around. Can everyone see that? Again, you guys can check it out on, during the workshop. They, they don't. Uh, this is just for the phone right now. Um, but it's something, it's a technology, like I said, it's not going to go away. So um, the, and then the same app, I have it on this one, right? I don't know. Like, is this the right thing to say here or not? But, um, yes. You're using four cameras there, right? Yes. I, I've seen Hangout doing exactly the same with just one camera, right? Yeah, you can do, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, I know what you're talking about. You can do a lot with just one camera. The, the four cameras, actually, there's only two at one time that are being used. The other two are in case you include it with your hand, so they get rid of those two. And then the other two are there just for accuracy. So 
the two being uh, are there, and they're also low power, so they don't use as much power as, as the standard camera. So there's reasons for all those cameras, and there's reasons for it. And so the accuracy and the power usage is, is really the key. Um, but yeah, I know what you're saying. You can do a lot with just CV and just being able to detect the face, but you wouldn't be able to detect distance. That's done by the delta between the two cameras, right? And so there's a lot there that, that adds to the, the functionality. So anyways, uh, here's the same app, and it's running on the, um, uh, the tablet as well. Um, same sort of thing. And again, when it's dynamic, uh, it allows you to, to redo the, the device and just reflow. So this is really how you're able to develop applications that are, that are going to go across all of these screen sizes without any, having any sort of issues, plus have functionality that's, that's only for uh, Amazon devices. So here are the URLs that I was promising before. Developer.amazon.com, the, the homepage, it could be a little bit better, but you're able to go into the, the Kindle and Fire devices, uh, and that will give you a lot of information. To download the AWV SDK, we're going to do the workshop right now, and uh, if, if you guys would like to de develop for the devices, I've got the devices here, I've got USB cables, we'll get you hooked up. The one thing we need is you need to go to the bit.ly, um, bit.ly, awv.sdk, that'll get you the download of the zip file. You can throw it in your Cordova directory, and we'll, we'll be able to compile. The other things to compile for the phone, you need the Fire Phone SDK. Um, and then also, if you want some, uh, the documentation is actually separated out into the Amazon Apps SDK. So that's where the head tracking uh, documentation is. Um, and then if you want to know more about Cord uh, Fire OS on Cordova, all the documentation about that is, is here. And then the push plugin is here. So these are all sort of co some convenient uh, URLs just to get to all the stuff I talked about today. And we will now, I'll leave that up there, and now we're going to do the, let's see, what time is it? It's 11.09, so we've got about 20 minutes or so. We can do some, some hands-on, um, and uh, we'll go from there, so, all right.